everybody, Chris Green here from the Practice Line Pad team. Today, I want to go over this operatory design. I want to talk mostly about the 12 o'clock setup and then IT setup with the uh, monitors and how we went about that. One thing I'll say about 12 o'clock, there are a million different ways to, to do this. As you'll see, I have a very rear delivery setup. Um, a lot of people like over the patient, but I think the principles here will be able to be um, customized to your preferences and it will help you know all the little things that you need to take into account when you do set up the layout for your 12 o'clock. First of all, this is a super simple cabinet system. I think it costs, the millwork costs about 1200 bucks. You could probably even do it cheaper because I think this huge plank here wasn't really necessary. Um, but the thought process was simplicity. So first of all, I have rear delivery. So this is the assistant package here. We have the trap here. And then we have the um, delivery system here. You can put an air driven hand piece on this one. I have an electric motor and then we have slow speeds from eBay that work great and air works great. So down here is where we've mounted the electric motor out of the way. This panel down here comes off. So if, the, if anything happened with the vacuum or any of the components back there, um, your service tech could get in there and deal with it. Right here, we have a Cavitron set up so that we could do hygiene in any room at any moment. If we had a patient in here sedated, they could just pop in the quick release to the water here and they could get going. We use the water bottle system, which is the preferred system these days. It saves us from, we just put, you know, tablets with city water in there and it helps save the equipment. It saves on plumbing costs. Um, a couple other things, these drawers are nice. That's where the remotes live right now. On this side, that's where the keyboard lives, keeps everything out of the way. And on this side, we put in a paper towel holder. I like paper towels, so it, you know, once in a while, so that's good to have. And then down here in these, these little areas, it's a storage area on this side. We also can the blood pressure cuff off down here. So everything's super efficient. Um, the glove um, box here, you know, you might want it on this side for some different design. You can even have like a um, auto body shop paint this black. I just, you know, have the metallic look. I didn't think of that idea until recently, but I'm giving it to you guys here. Uh, as a, as a thinking ahead. Um, so we got, then we have our restorative bins, uh, anesthetic bins. We do the bin system for all of our supplies. This keeps them covered. I can quickly bring them back to the tip out bins and restock. Um, we have the floss in every room, um, cavity wipes, and then alcohol free wipes for all of our sensors and our uh, intraoral camera because you don't want to use alcohol on those. What else? Just simple things like that. A couple of these sheets, this is our emergency workup sheet. It's really helpful, especially for newer assistants. Uh, we could share that with you. This is our Invisalign payment option sheet, which has really helped conversions. We notice no patient remembers any steps to an implant. So we print this out for them and fill that out. And then an ortho um, cosmetic consult sheet. So some sheets that we have in the rooms at all times and they kind of just live, live back here for easy access, okay? In order to save our, our sensors, we bought these sensor hangers. You can get these on Amazon or eBay. They'll be on my supply list that you could get. In fact, everything in this room will be linked with an Amazon supply list uh, that I created that'll help streamline the whole ordering process for you and your team. Um, I like having the intraoral cameras mounted right in the room. Case acceptance goes way up. Uh, what else? We have a tiny garbage pan on this side, which works out really well. And let's talk about IT now. So we've mounted the computer behind the monitor. You have to use a full-size computer for uh, the different outputs in the back. Everybody wants to use those little small, really small computers these days. That actually won't work at this time um, unless you want to spend a lot of money. They might have some that have enough uh, display port and HDMI inputs in the back, but I think you're going to pay an arm and a leg. So these mounts are great. They're a clean look. They're on, a nice, on the supply list. Um, we use a 
powered HDMI or sorry, powered USB port. So this is where everything gets plugged into. You never want to plug everything in and out of the computer's USB ports because they will wear out over time and it will be a very expensive fix. If this thing wears out, I just throw it out and I buy a new one, but it's probably never going to wear out because I have all this. And it's very important that it has the powered version. I'll have a link for this as well. If it's not powered, it will draw power from the computer and we notice that the computers would shut down when that would happen or have many issues. <laughs> so let's talk about the screens. I have three screens set up. The ceiling one, and I have the mounts um, on, online as well, uh, a link to them. And we have the six o'clock one. That's a big one, okay? These two are an exact mirror of each other and they come off the HDMI input here which goes into an HDMI splitter. We'll show you a picture of the back of this later. And then two HDMI cords, one that runs up through the ceiling right to there, another that runs all the way to the foot, comes out the wall and into the back. One really great trick that um, my buddy Dr. Andre taught me was for this one in the back. We got these HDMI connectors so that you, sometimes these cords pull on the TV this way, you use this little extender, you plug the HDMI into here, and this is the TV. And that will save your um, save your butt, so you don't have to replace a whole TV if that tugging on the HDMI um, cord actually caused the TV to go out. You only know that trick if you experience the problem like I have the time. Um, and then back here, you should be some. I like these um, six outlet um, converters for these are surge protectors. These are great. And the rest is pretty self explanatory. I think the monitor is the big thing that people want to remember. For the cords that go through the ceiling, um, you're also going to have your data drops for your Ethernet that goes right into the computer. What you want to think of when you tell your contractor is to put a big piece of PVC, like this big, up through, instead of a little piece of metal conduit, because you'll never be able to get all these cords through up to the ceiling. This was something that I, I learned later on after fighting with, uh, with getting the cords through the, the wall. And then also for the conduit down there, I would have, you don't need a data drop on either of these, you only need the data drop here. But for those, I would have a bigger um, input or bigger, sorry, conduit to run the HDMI for the main TV down there. Finally, on the ceiling, you're gonna ask your contractor for backing so that the, um, the TV doesn't fall. You know, plywood behind the, the um, ceiling tile to mount it to. So that's all I can think of for right now. It's getting kind of long-winded. Um, I will put together, actually in our book, our Excellent Traffic Pad book, it shows exactly what I did for this setup. And I'm also gonna have an online landing page for the exact IT setup, step-by-step -step, with pictures. They explain everything that's back here. And that's how, you know, the way we save tens of thousands of dollars on IT. Uh, thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time.